So I'm going to be talking about another topic for order in the house, and I'm going to be talking about submitting, submitting your ways to the shepherd. So if you want to pull up Proverbs 3, we're going to, I'm going to go line by line. I don't know if you guys will like it, but it is what it is. Oh, that's nice. A little lower. It's nice. There we go. That can stay. I like a little background ambiance. It is nice, isn't it? I'm an ambiance person, okay? Okay. I know. If you go to women's group, you know. It's just my thing. I like it. Okay. So, I want to talk to, about your emotions and heart today. We're going to touch some sore spots and maybe cause some uncomfortable emotions to rise. But if we don't learn to submit our emotions to the shepherd... We won't learn how to be the sheep of his pasture who know his voice. And, and women's group are talking about sheep all the time. So we all say, sheep, ba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did great, Michael. I <laughs> you did great. So we've been talking about sheep, a lot about sheep. I mean, we think we know everything about a sheep. Sheep don't drink fast-paced water. They only drink slow. Um. We're just studying Psalm 23 really slow. It's been really good. Anyways, we don't need to talk about that. All right, let's look at the beginning of Proverbs 3. So I'm going to go slow. So if you lose, you're going to have to just go slow. Okay. My child, if I'm reading from the Passion Translation, I have another one too, but I'm going to stick with this one. My child, if you truly want a long and satisfying life, never forget the things that I've taught you. Follow closely every truth that I've given you. Then you will have a full rewarding life. Okay, so first he tells us to follow closely every truth that he has ever given us. You must first learn to be led by him. And then once you understand the truths Jesus gives you, then you must be faithful to them. So that's what he first implores you. You first have to have truth. And then he says that you have to hold on to a loyal love and don't let go and be faithful to all that you've been taught. Let your life be shaped by integrity. So, so if you want a full and rewarding life, you must be following closely, full of integrity, Jesus, we just thank you for full understanding of this, that you would just release it to me right now because I'm struggling. Okay. <laughs> you must hold on to loyal love. So whose loyal love? His or yours? His. Our hearts are not to be trusted. Our impulses and fleshly responses need to be first submitted to his loyal love and faithful teachings before we respond. How many of us actually do that before we respond to a, a person or a situation? You can be honest. Okay. I'm like, we don't got to lie here, okay? If you do it, you're not like a cool person and nobody else's. It's a thing that has to be taught. Okay. So in order to do those things, our lives have to first be shaped by integrity and allow the truth to saturate our hearts. You have to be filled with integrity to walk in truth. So if you want to look up what integrity, I like Merriam-Webster. I think she's pretty cool. I don't know if you guys know who she is, but she's a dictionary. Uh-huh. And we always, in women's group, we're like, who's got Merriam? Okay. So do you guys know what integrity actually means? It means incorruptible not subject to decay or dissolution, and capable of being bribed or morally corrupted. It means soundness and completeness. Completeness. So if you're in, teg in integrity, you're not corruptible. If you're in soundness, that means you're in truth. Because a sound mind, a he is sound, it's truth. And if you're in completeness, then you're one with Christ. So in order to... Do what he asks you to do here. You have to first submit to him for 
to receive all these things. So he says, my child, if you truly want a long and satisfying life, never forget the things that I've taught you. Follow closely every truth that I've given you. Then you will have a full rewarding life. Hold on to loyal love and don't let go. And be faithful to all that you've been taught. Let your life be shaped by integrity with truth written upon your heart. And then we go, and then he keeps that, and then four, verse four. That's how you will find favor and understanding with both God and men. You will gain the reputa- reputation of living life well. Um, how many in you, of you in here knows what it's like to have favor with God and man? Like where you have just like this moment where a man, somebody shows you favor? I think that that's um, really important that we, tr- we learn how to do that because that's how people see the nature of Christ. and actually implores them to want to know Jesus more. So when we walk in integrity, it means that you have to walk in it in every aspect of life. It's not just one aspect or two. It's when you're at Costco and they forget to scan things and you have to wait in line for 15 minutes. And then I keep telling the guy, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And he keeps looking at me like, why are you so, like, happy? And I'm like, oh, I was like, it's not your fault. You just work here. And he, and I do this every time. This happens to me all the time. I think it's funny. I think the Lord's trying to do something. But I was like, every time they forget something. And so, and I'm like, it's fine, man. Like, it's not a big deal. It's not your fault. It's not like you can control it. You're not the cashier. And then I, he's like, why are you so nice? And I'm like, I'm just nice, man. It's just good. It's good to be nice. It's the kindness. You need kindness. And he's like, just looking at me so strange. And I didn't necessarily feel like the Lord's like, tell him now who I am. It was more of like, I just wanted to be Jesus to him. And then, and then I left. And I was like, thank you. He's like, no, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you. You are amazing. And I'm like, yeah, you, you just met Jesus. <laughs> it happens to me everywhere I go. Everybody at Whole Foods knows my name. Hey, Hannah. Hey, you. And it's like, you have to live in integrity and uprightness. You have to walk in soundness and complete truth. You have, to, you have to not respond like the world. So like if someone messes up your food, I would say, instead be like, hey, man, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's, it's not a big deal. And they'll be like, because people are really mean right now in the world. And I don't, like they're always like, I'm like, how's your day? They're like, oh, it's awful. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. You have an awful day. Because people are not nice. And so I, I say, be nice to your cashiers. I always talk to them. I always make them feel like people. You know, I'm not saying that's the only way you can walk in integrity. You have lots of opportunities to do that. Okay, so we're going to walk in integrity because in Psalm 41, 12, I love this. Because of my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. Oh. Psalm 41, 12, because of my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. So integrity sets us in his presence because he is integrity. He's full of it. All right, now we're going to go to Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord completely. Stop. No moving forward. What does the word completely mean? Does everybody know? Okay, you ready? I got the real one. I asked Miriam. She knows what's up. Okay. It means total, absolute, free from imperfection, perfect. So it means he is absolute in your life. And it means that he is perfect. So it means he will take you into his absolute perfect will for your life. And he will make sure every decision you make is perfectly in him. If you trust in the Lord completely. Okay, so we're trusting in the, we're walking down a path. And we're trusting in the Lord completely. And then all of a sudden an arrow gets shot by and something bad happens. A diagnosis, um, something bad happens in your family, in your marriage, somebody dies, something bad happens, okay? And then now I have this scripture verse. Trust in the Lord completely. Uh, 
your flesh is going to say, absolutely not. This is the absolutely not. But your spirit's going to say, we have no other way to go. Okay? And then this is what happens. He says, next line, and do not rely on your own opinions. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Um, I do that sometimes, and it always isn't good for me. Okay, with all your heart, rely on him to guide you, and he will lead you in every decision you make. Didn't say some, didn't say when you need him, when disaster hits. He said it every decision you make. Then if you go right down now to Proverbs 3, 6, okay, we're going to read that. Become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. Okay, hold on. So there is no wonder in how to do what he tells you perfectly. I always have people ask me, what do I do? I can't hear God and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, do you trust in the Lord completely? No. Okay, start there. Right, the simplicity. Okay, I don't trust him. I'm mad at him. He, he hurt me and this bad thing happened. I don't understand why and now I can't trust him. Okay, so let's start there. You have to forgive God. And then you have to forgive yourself for being mad at God. And then we're going to move on from there. So the answer to receiving instruction is what? To be what with him? Okay. So if you become intimate with him in whatever you do, then he will lead you wherever you go. So that's not a suggestion. That's a promise. So anybody know what intimate means? Okay, let's ask her. Okay. Intimate is much deeper than just being you know, whatever. There's kids in the room. Okay. Into me means into me you see. It means to be marked by a warm friendship developing through long association. Hold on. Okay. It's a marked by a warm friendship developing through long association. So what does that mean you actually have to do? You have to actually know him. And you have to actually know him for a what? A period of time. So I will say this. I realized something in the car today when I was driving and I was worshiping the Lord. And I always ask the Lord, when I, if I'm struggling to get in, I'm like, take me back. Because I, I can just go back to when I first met him. And then I enter right in immediately because I can't ever forget that. And that wrecked my life. So if I'm struggling, I'm like, take me back. Take me back to the beginning. I don't sing that song. But I just think about when I first met him and how... Like, I did so abandoned, didn't care, and I would have ran around with, like, a robe on if I had to just to meet with him because I was so hungry. And then I thought about for a second, like, you, when I got, when I met the Lord, like, we didn't have phones that could do cool things. Um, and so I thought for a minute today, like, the Lord was saying, I don't want micro-minute pastors I don't want micro minute believers. I see these people get saved. They're, like, six months in. And they're already a pastor. And I'm like, bruh, you don't even have longevity. It worries me. Because then whenever life gets rough or things are rough, their foundation isn't secure. They, are not, they don't have long association with him. It gets ripped out beneath them and they fall and they're struggling. So to me, if I want to have intimacy with Jesus, this is a long haul thing. This isn't a short minute thing. This isn't like, hey, I got saved and now I have all this intimacy with Jesus. And I'm like, yeah, wait till he rocks the boat. Wait till he's like, hey, Hannah, I want you to walk on that water and you're going to be all right. You're not going to be swallowed up by a fish or nothing, Jonah. He had to believe up in there. I love Jonah. He's my favorite. Ian doesn't like Jonah. I like Jonah. Remember when I told you about Jonah, you're like, he's just a sad guy and a fish. <laughs> I was like, no, Jonah is a prophet. I have a, I have a soft spot for those prophets. I'm like, look, the Lord is so gracious to him. He made him a plant. And he let him sit under it and be sad. And then the Lord's like, all right, your emotions can't win today. Die, plant. And then he had to get up and walk. But I love the ability the Lord gave him to just kind of be in his feels for a minute. And he's like, you can't stay there, though, Joni. You got to get up. Okay, but to be intimate, it means I have to be very personal. I have to be very personal with him, and we have a private nature together. It means marked by very close association, contact, or familiarity. 
belonging to or characterizing one's deepest nature. Just ask Miriam what intimate means and then just start looking at that. Start looking at it. Ask her because people always go like, they're like, I have intimacy with God. And I'm like, Do you, it's not you lighting candles and drinking coffee and reading your Bible. I mean, I think that's cute if you do that. <laughs> All the Gen Zers like, me. Um, oh, Michael too. Michael is not a Gen Zer. Okay. Um, it's okay, Michael. We're in the same vein. Actually, I don't, yeah, you are. Millennial. Okay, so uh, I want to challenge intimacy. I want, does your intimacy with the Lord look like what I just said? Because then you should look at those characteristics and really define if you have true intimacy with him. I don't want you deceived. Being intimate with him is actually the greatest job of your life. So make sure you're understanding what it means to be intimate with him. It's not just getting on the prayer closet, touch me one more time so that I can go out in the world, Lord. It's more like, Jesus, I just want to adore you. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being everything when I'm absolutely nothing. I can't do this without you. I actually don't want anything from you. I just want to love you right now. Because I'm going to tell you something. I don't have to ask him. He just does it. I don't go into the prayer closet hoping that I get something from him. That's not an intimate relationship. That's a friend with benefits. What is he, your little call? Ooh, I need some God. Hook me up. I go in there and I'm like, you're worthy. You're worthy when my life sucks. You're worthy when that thing that I need isn't getting answered and I'm broken. You're worthy when this bad thing happens to me again and again and again. You're worthy when I'm swallowed up by life. You're always worthy because you're Jesus. That's intimacy. It's a, war, it's a friendship. I don't go up to Christina and be like, Christina, when you were living like that, you sucked. Right? I'm, I'm warm to her. I, I would come in and, Christina, I love you. It's okay you're broken. That's what Jesus does. Hey, Hannah, it's okay you're broke, but thank you for drawing near to me. Now I can love you. Oh, you look messy. Great, you're in my room, and we're together, and now I can clean you up. That's friendship. I'm, I'm sharing my personal nature with him, and he's sharing his personal nature back. It's a, well, I'm giving you my rawness, and you're giving me back rawness. I'm giving you my brokenness, and then you give me life. That's friendship. I have to be able to trust him. And he has to trust you. He isn't going to give you things if he can't trust you. Okay, so we got intimate down. Like I said, look up Miriam. She's got it. Okay. Proverbs 3, 7 now. Oh, this one's great. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided of devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. I give, I adore him with undivided devotion and I stop doing anything that's wrong. Anything, any, anything that's wrong. I mean, I'm like, okay, Lord, can't drink, can't smoke, no more smoking weed, love the, no more doing this. Okay, I give it all up to you because I don't do anything that's wrong. Why? What's the point of not doing anything that's wrong? So we can what to him? Adore him. That's what the scripture says. I push it all away and I make room for the king. In my house, in my life, I push it away and then I adore him. So what would happen if those things keep coming in? What am I maybe not doing? Adoring him. Maybe I lost the wonder of adoration towards the one who gave me my life again. So if I have sin creeping back in, I got a question, am I actually adoring him? Because that would say, he says, don't do anything that's wrong. And that adoring him, I think it's important. I love when he says, don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom comes. Okay. What would inhibit you, because we keep reading, hold on, I got to make sure. What would inhibit, inhibit you from hearing his sweet, tender voice? Because he tells you, don't think you know it all. What would be knowing it all? Your pride, your flesh, 
your own motives, what you think you need, or what you think is best for you. You hinder his voice to be heard, and it's like putting on earmuffs in the spirit and referring to yourself as the one who has the answers. It then grieves the Holy Spirit, and then his voice becomes silent, but really you have chosen to become your own guide and your own shepherd. So is it really that God isn't speaking? Because when I, when I hear people say God doesn't speak to me, I'm like, yes, he does. And then I go, well, okay, that's a spiritual problem. You have, the, you have the earmuffs on. You have your own opinions, your own leaning on your own understanding, and you're guiding yourself down the path of righteousness. Where's that going to lead you? I don't know, but it ain't going to be good. So then you go to Proverbs 3.8. This is so good. Then you will find healing refreshment for your body and spirit that long for, right? Yeah. Okay. So then I pause for a minute. You will find healing refreshment your body and spirit long for. Oh, poo. And I thought, How many people are hindered in healing because, uh uh-oh, are you hindered in healing because you don't apply this to your life? Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions or the doctors. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you. Oh, and he will lead you in every decision you make. You can sit on that forever. That's for everything. But he says he would bring you, you would find the healing refreshment, your body. I can't give that up. I can't stop there. Why would he say that? And spirit, long for it. So then you have to question, why am I sick in my body, Lord? Is it because I'm not trusting completely and I'm relying on my own opinion, the doctor's opinion, my girlfriend's opinion, Facebook's opinion, Google's opinion, and I went on Google, don't Google nothing. (laughs) You'll be like, I'm dying. And then you'll take on a spirit of death, and then you'll think you're dead. I know people that have literally taken that on, and they literally thought they were dying, and they were under a spirit of death because they didn't realize that they were pushing into and getting opinions from Google. I was telling them they were dying, and then they're actually not, and that spirit's like, yeah, I'm going to bite because that's good. I can live there because that constant fear is giving me food to eat, to live and sustain myself in that body. Oh, don't get me sorry. Okay. Ooh, but I can't. That's so powerful. Whenever people are like, I need healing for my body, I'm like, okay, where's your meditation rate with the Lord? What are you meditating on? Google symptoms or what he did on the cross at Calvary? Okay, here's you. Okay, I'm going to have to figure out a way. Christina, you be my model. Okay, I can't do this with one hand. Okay, you pretend this hand is Jesus. I like Okay, but you need a, I need to fist it up. Okay, okay. This is your mind seated in Christ. This is the Satan hand. Ugh, make it all ugly. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> ugly Christina. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I need a new actor. I'm just playing. Okay. So. I'm just going to get to this point now. You can, if you need to relax your ugly hand for a second, you can. Or if you got it together, you can keep it. I don't want it to get cramped. Oh, I'm making myself laugh. Hey, Charlie horse is hurt. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. Give me some. Okay, I'm in the wrong Corinthians. It's fine. All of you have probably heard this verse, but if you haven't, it's fine. Okay. It's 2 Corinthians 2, 5. All right. I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to use you. Okay. Um, Go down to 10, 3 through 4. For although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy. Woo, stop. Okay, let's go. 
right here. This is the mind of Christ. This is a deceptive fantasy. Okay. So my deceptive fantasy is I don't think the pastor's doing a great job. And I think that, that I could do a better job and that this is my anointing and they're hindering me. Now, what is the mind of Christ's job? Is to take every thought, okay, against the authority of Christ Jesus is what the scriptures say. Okay, well, I'm like, okay, well, the truth is that's a lie. Boom. Okay, what stays strong? The mind of Christ. Okay, what happens if I don't? Keeps happening, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. I hate that. Yeah, that pastor needs to get it together. Yeah, I hate that. I mean, we need to do this more in the church. They don't pray enough. They're not singing enough. I don't like how Hannah preaches. She's a prophetess liar. She's this. She's that. Okay, I'm just playing around. Not really. Okay, and then what happens? The mind of Christ gets, and what becomes your mind? And what does this become? A strong man which now means I actually have a stronghold, which now means that I actually need the Holy Spirit to come and demolish that. So I might need deliverance, or it might be that I need to take my mind even more captive. So that example, you can do that with everything. Okay? So you're believing for healing. All right. I ha- I'm just saying, somebody has cancer, okay? They go to the doctor, and they're like, you have stage four cancer, you're going to die. Okay? Do you take their opinion and make it your God? Well, no, a lot of people do. Not you, Sierra, I know. You'd be like, hey, hey, listen, man, that's a lie. I don't take your doctor's note. She would be all up in it, right? Don't be mad at them. They're not second-class healers. It's not their fault. Be kind to the doctors. Be an example. Don't yell at them. They're doing their job. You have to do it yourself. I can't stand when people are mean to doctors. They're trying their best. They're not second-class healers. If that's where someone's faith level is, Lord will meet them there. And they save people's lives. But if your faith level is no, then the Lord's going to meet you there. So say I'm there, and I'm like, I don't even want that. I don't want any medicine. I don't want any of that stuff. And this thought comes in. It's like you need that medicine. You're going to, you're, and it's just going to keep fighting. It's going to keep warring because why you don't, you're not fighting again. Oh, you're going to be the, you're going to be the hand. Okay. Okay. She's doing good. Okay. So we've got the deceptive fantasies that oppose God and break through. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. They oppose God and break through. That means it's his enemy. They're opposing his nature. They're opposing his government. And then it says, and every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. Oh, arrogant. You know, look at both of those. Okay. It's raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. If anything does. It's the disposition is to resist willingness to contend or fight. So what are you supposed to, you're supposed to challenge it. How many of you don't challenge it and let your mind go crazy? I used to be really bad. You know what happened? I was in the mirror one day and I was like looking rough because I had babies and I milks everywhere. Oh, it was bad. Postpartum, rough, okay? You look at yourself and you're like, Oh my God, who's that chick? I like, I, Tara's like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, my hair hasn't been washed. I smell, it's rough. And I just, my thoughts were awful. And the Lord looked, it was as though the Lord looked at me. I looked at myself, but the Lord was looking at me and he's like, shape up, Hannah. What are you doing letting your mind go around like this? And I was like, oh, you're right, Lord. I look like, I look, I look like how I feel in here. And so he's like, take them. You need to start captive. You need to get it together. So I spent a whole, because I had such bad postpartum um, depression, I spent a whole year healing. And a whole year because I didn't know how to take my thoughts captive. So we took that year of me learning to take my thoughts captive. It was my year of learning how to retain my healing. So some of you wonder why you're going through a hard season and you're not seeing breakthrough. It's because he's teaching you how to retain something for a lifelong What are you going to do next time it happens? If he didn't teach you the first time, what are you going to do? 
I'm serious. We struggle with suffering. Get it together. It's a part of being in Christ and Christ in you. It's a part of you learning a system. You had no problem learning the system of how to get drunk and get high and do all the drugs. And you had no problem with the system of learning how to be a banger or doing drug dealing. But as soon as you got, I got to suffer for the Lord. I'm done. This place, I'm out. I don't want to learn this. I'm like, but you gave the devil everything. You can't give him everything. Listen, you have got to do this. You will not survive in Christianity if you do not get this. This is literally milk. If, and they don't teach you this. It's like you go throughout your whole life with these thoughts. It's like your mind is in the chaos, but your, bo- your spirit is willing, but your mind is in chaos. The Lord can't use you if your mind is spinning. He can't because there's, there's, no, in, there's no peace. So we also are going to learn about rebellion. Mm-hmm. Rebellious people. Okay. I whoo. Okay. I was rebellious once too. It's fine. Okay. We capture these thoughts like prisoners of war. All right. Let's go. We're in a government. We're in a battle. We got the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. You've got two government systems that have rights and regulations and rules. Which government system are you bowing down to? Okay, well, what does it look like being the government is over here? You already know. So you got to learn this government system. So he says, we're captioner of these things like prisoners of war. I don't care how you have to think about it. Make it up in your head what it looks like to capture a thought. I just, I just kill it. This is Sparta. I don't care what you do. Okay, you guys don't even know what that movie is probably. It is a great movie. I don't know anymore. Is there a scene? There's a scene. Okay, <laughs> don't watch that movie. <laughs> you get <laughs> it is, but it was a great movie before I knew Jesus. Okay, there's this movie you're like, oh, that movie. Oh, that movie's not great. Just playing. Don't watch that movie. It's not a good movie. Okay, whatever it is, and insist that it bow in obedience to the Anointed One. Whatever that thought is, you insist you will bow down to Jesus. I don't have to play with you anymore. We aren't playing together anymore. I don't want to have that thought anymore. And you know what's going to happen? You have to do it a lot. (laughs) You're going to have to do it a lot. It's going to be like every day. And you're going to get tired. You're going to get tired. You're going to be like, God, I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, my gosh, I'm so tired. I'm worn out, God. And he's like, do you have hand, you know, you have nails in your hands, Hannah? No. No. You have nails in your feet? No. You hang him from a cross? Nope. Okay, how bad can it be? That's what I say to myself. That's how I get through it. I'm like, okay, I'm not hanging from a cross. He just wants me to take a thought captive. Discipline. Since we are armed with such dynamic weaponry, we stand ready. Are you ready? Are you taken over by the cares of the world and tossed through and throw like a ship or are you ready what if you're in if you're a soldier you have to be ready if i'm on a combat field i can't just be like my life hey see, so you see i don't have any food that i like and i'm dying it's hot there's scorpions and i don't want to do this anymore okay same thing in the spirit realm You're being a baby. He's like, oh, my gosh. Get together, guys. We got a war. You're going to have to judge angels. You can't even get over a disagreement with a friend. Oh, no. You can't get over because somebody said something that irritated you. Oh, you aren't going to be used for that stuff. The Lord's going to be like, dude, get it together. (sighs) Come on, guys. We got to do this. We got to be ready to punish. Oh, he's so good. He says, we stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion as soon as you choose complete obedience. Hold on. We stand ready. I should be my slogan. We stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion. Rebellion. Opposition to one in authority or dominance. Who are you opposing? 
King Jesus. Open armed and un, unusual, uh, open armed and usually unsuccessful defiance of or resistance resistance to an established government. Whose government? <laughs> an instance of such defiance or resistance. When you walk in rebellion towards the Lord, you're rebelling the whole heavenly realm. It's a government system. That's why we're doing this, order in the house. Heaven is a government. It isn't just this cool place where we're going to hop on rainbows and hang out together. I'm just playing around. I don't know if we're hopping on rainbows. I mean, I'm down with it, but. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun. Okay. No, we're not going there, Hannah. Okay. But I'm serious. This is hard stuff to chew on, but if, but if I don't tell you, it's not going to work. For, you will not get. I'm telling you, you don't understand. You can do all things with Christ who strengthens you. How would you have been able to get through Kevin's cancer without this thought. No, it's everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know when Paul wrote this, he wrote it because he was defending his ministry and he was so sick and tired of the people and he writes letters to them and he's all fierce in his letters, but then when he gets there, he's like a baby, like he struggles. Dude, I feel like him. I'd be like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm going to tear it up. And then I get there, I'm like, nah, I ain't going to tear up nothing. I'm freaking out. <laughs> you can sit down, unless you like standing by me. Okay. But really, he, this is what he says in the beginning. Now, please listen, for I need to address an issue. I'm making this personal appeal to you by the gentleness and self-forgetfulness of Christ. I mean, he forgets. Like he's, he's forgetting, he's forgetfulness towards you. Okay, you, you're sinning, you're being bad. I'm being, he's being selfless. The Christ is, not Paul. <laughs> I am the one who is humble and timid when face to face with you but bold and outspoken when a safe distance away. Now I plead with you that when I come, don't force me to take a hard line with you, which I'm willing to do. <sighs> By daring to confront those who mistakenly believe that we are living by the standards of the world and not by the Spirit's wisdom and power. So Paul, is a, he's a pastor, he's fed up. He's like, y'all acting like we're living in the world. You don't understand. There's a battle going on above your head, and you guys are standing there like, nee, I can't get along, and I can't stop sleeping with my sister. See, I can't even imagine. Sometimes I'm like, I look at Paul, and I'm like, dang, being a pastor, like having to be a pastor in Paul's time, I'd cry. I'd be gone. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like that sometimes, but really, I mean, he had to deal with some pretty like literally intense things. But I mean, I think we deal with them too. They're just more hidden. But really, that was just mostly what I want to talk about is how to take your thoughts captive. And in all that, in order to submit your ways to the shepherd, it means you have to submit every thought, not just the bad ones. I'm also talking about your overly emotional self. I don't care if you don't like Judy. Get over it. Go tell Judy she hurt your feelings. I'm so, I have to do this. Come on. The, you're gossiping. We don't need to do that. We're grown women. Let's get it. Come on. I don't want to tell Judy she might not like me anymore. All right. It's okay, Cassandra. We're going to be all right. We're just going to tell you we're sorry. We're going to tell somebody that our feelings are hurt. I don't want to do that. What if she hates me? Oh, my gosh, Cassandra, it's going to be fine. Judy's going to be. This is literally what I have to do. I'm going to walk over. Cassandra, Judy, Cassandra, tell Judy how you feel. You hurt my feelings. Judy, I didn't know I hurt you. And then it's fine. And I'm always like, oh, my gosh. We, come on. But you know what happened to Cassandra? She was submitting her thoughts to the demonic realm, and they were spinning it. Judy hates you. Judy thinks you, you stink. Judy doesn't like your shoes. Judy doesn't want to play with you on the playground. 
Judy doesn't want to come to your women's Bible study because she thinks you can't teach the Bible. And then you listen to the doctrine of demons over and over and over again. And then by the time you get to Judy, you've created a what kind of fantasy? A deceptive fantasy on an issue and just could have asked one question. So order in my house is I won't be doing that. So if you got an issue with Judy, you can come to me and I'll walk you up. I, I mean, I'm fine with it. It's fine. It's scary. It's intimidating. But you don't actually walk. So I grew up in, a, in, a, in an environment where we were confrontational. So I'll just be like, I don't like you. What's up? And then it'll be like, bah, 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 you know, whatever. And then the Lord's like, no, you can't do that either. I'm like, oh, dang it. That's so much easier. You just settle it. But what I realized a lot of time in the Christian culture is it's like, I have a right to be a victim. I'm hurt. And so we need to pray for Judy. She's really messed up, guys. Okay. What? <clears throat> We need to pray for Judy. She's really, yeah, she did this, this, and this, and I don't like Judy no more. We're not friends. Oh, okay. So what I'm saying is you're submitting yourself to a spirit. Everything that doesn't line up with the word of the Lord, you shouldn't be putting it in your head. So one, if you don't read your Bible, and you, you need to read it now. Beginning to end. Not the, the New Testament because it's fun. The Old Testament's actually my favorite. Ezekiel and Isaiah are my buds. I just, I click. I like the Psalms too, but we got to get it together. In this house, I won't be doing gossip. I won't be doing drama. If you want to partner with a spirit, you're going to have to deal with it with me or with Nicholas or with Ian. And I'm going to take every stronghold down and I'm going to see Jesus elevated in this place. I'm not going to tolerate the demonic spirits. It's cool if you want to hang with them. I'm not doing it. So if I see you disrupting my house, I'm going to clean it up. And I mean it with all respect. But if I see you doing that, it hurts the body. Do you want to actually know what my job is? Are you ready for this? So Jeremy Riddle wrecked my life. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everything's going to be okay. Essentially, he came up on stage. I was at a pastor's conference. And he's like... He had this, his wife had a dream, and in this dream, an angel had a message for him, but she couldn't, he couldn't quite bring it to him. And so she woke up, and you know, those wives that have the cool dreams, she's like, so I had a dream about you, Jeremy, and like, this angel's trying to give me a message, but I couldn't get it from him. And Jeremy's like, that's it, I'm fasting for three days. And then she's like, okay. So he's just water. And he, he said he would climb up this hill to go and be alone with the Lord. And he's like, I'm more like crawled, but I got up there because he's fasting. And he said, finally on the, th like, the third, like, uh, the second day, he's, like, halfway up. And he's, like, Lord, what is this message? And the angel said, repentance. And he's, or the Lord said, repentance. And he was, like, repentance. Like, what? Like, I already. And the Lord began to, like, no, you don't understand. Repentance. Return it back to the house. Stop saying what is good is, what is evil is good and what is good is evil. But then. He read Revelations. How dare he? And all of a sudden he started reading. I'll just read to you. You don't have to. You can turn there if you want. It's Revelation 2. Write the following to the messenger of the congregation in Ephesus. For these are the words of the one who holds the seven stars, finally in his right hand, and who walks among the seven gold stands, oh, golden lampstands. It's Jesus. I know all that you've done for me. You have worked hard and persevered. I know that you don't tolerate evil. You have tested those who proclaim to be apostles and prove they are not, for they were imposters. I also know how you have bravely endured trials and persecutions because of my name. Yet you have not become discouraged, but I have this against you. And he said that word, and my spirit went, po -po. And the fear of the Lord broke out inside me. And all of a sudden, I began to fear God. But Hannah, this I have against you. But Hannah, this I have. And I said, Lord, I crave your this I have against you. Bring it. I would rather him tell me now before I get to heaven when I walk up to him. And he goes, Hannah, this I have against you. How shattered of a life would my life have been if I missed the one thing he needed from me. So now, 
As a pastor, I don't say these things because it's cool. It's, I don't want this I have against you. You let the Jezebel spirit run crazy in your church. He says that to a church. All, all, a Jezebel spirit is not a female being crazy and seductive. Just in that context. It's a lot broader than that. It's something that causes division in a church. It brings witchcraft in through intercession. It's evil. And people, it happens all the time. And he says, but this I have against you. And I, my spirit was ringing again and again. And, I, and he says this. You have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. Think about how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works of love you did at first. I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place of influence if you do not repent. And that wouldn't stop ringing in my head. But then it got crazier because I'm a dreamer. And I'm not going to say any details. Except I started dreaming about church in the regions this I have against you to the churches and the regions he was showing me. And then I sat like, oh my gosh, you're okay. I'm scared. This you have, and then he said to me, this I have against you, Hannah, you have to get control of the spirits in your environment. You, you can't run like wild people because there's kids in he means it. He's serious. We have to check our spiritual health at all times. You need to plug into him and check to make sure you are. It is so easy. Are you ready? Here's Peter. Oh, you're going to build the foundations and oh, that's a church on me. Satan, out. One second. In the spirit, in the flesh. The Lord showed me that. He goes, Hannah, it takes you one second. Me. That's to you. The church, it takes you one second to step in your flesh. And then when you step in your flesh, you're no longer operating in him. And so everything that's being done is unto yourself. I fear it for me. So then I inherently have to fear it for you. Be careful that you don't slip into that. It's easy. We're all going to inevitably do it. But it's the quickness to repentance. And then I believe as I learn to do the quick that eventually I don't have to do that anymore because I'll be so in awe of him that I won't care for my, and then I'll be, and then this whole room is going to be, and then we're all going to have our flesh dying on the ground, and then the enemy is going to be defeated, and we're going to keep worshiping him, but then I won't have to say, this I have against you, church, that you didn't lay down your life for me. This I have against you, church. Read it. Let it wreck your life. It will put you in position. It's not about me doing it. It's this that did it. So steady your heart. Be ready at all times. Take your thoughts captive and ask him, what is it that you have against me, Father, that I may walk like you want me to? It's not about living in sin consciousness. And this way I factor, I'm like, oh, I'm going to mess up. Oh, I'm going to do this thing. It's... Lord, I adore you so much. I want heaven to come here. I want to stand up and say, good and faithful servant. So, Lord, come to me now and tell me what you have against me. That's heavy. But I had to give it because I won't do it. I won't do it. If you, if you choose to submit to those things, that's fine. But it won't stay here. Because I have to go to heaven for your behalf. And so if I never spoke it from my mouth, and I never said anything, I'm going to be the one. Ian will be the one. Nick will be the one. To have to stand before the Lord. Hey, Ian, this I have against you. Hannah, this. And I broke I was, I was like, for days, I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm, what did I sin? Did I, what did I do? And the Lord's like, no, I, I, you have the fear of the Lord, Hannah. I, I was like, oh my gosh, is someone sinning in the church really bad? He's like, no, it's the fear of the Lord. 
It's, it's, you need it. It will keep you. 